Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Monday, December 30th, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 45. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have colleges spying on students and Kanye on land ownership. But first... About a dozen new state laws will affect schools across California. Starting next school year, it will be illegal for public schools in the state to suspend students in first through fifth grade for willfully defying teachers or administrators. Then from 2021 through 2025, it will be temporarily extended to kids in grades six through eight. Supporters say suspensions for willful defiance are disproportionately used against students of color. What are your thoughts? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> yeah. First, you give all this responsibility to the teachers. They have to be, you know, the, as we've as been covering on this podcast this past year, you know, mental health experts for these students. You have to be all these servers. And now you can't, there's no, yeah. they're going to take away their power to actually have any say or being able to actually do anything about children misbehaving. Woo. Good luck, yeah. California. I feel like they're just legislating around the real issue too, which is like we've been saying, teachers are asked to too much. And yep. instead of focusing on smaller class sizes or how to actually help these students. Or pay the teachers more, yeah. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of issues, but. <laughs> uh, right, moving on. Yeah. Today. Pentagon tells service members not to use DNA test kits. Uh -oh. It comes just a few <laughs> days before Christmas and says military personnel should not buy kits that allow sending off a sample of DNA for testing. The memo says the kits could expose personal and genetic information and potentially create unintended security consequences and increased risk. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. Sending off genetic. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so should anyone Wait, be doing yeah, this? should anybody be doing this? And if they shouldn't be yeah. doing this, should anybody? I feel like there should have been a whole warning. Yeah. There should have been war There should have been, as soon as these services announced they existed, this warning should have come yeah. out. So everybody, you might want to not do this because it's a huge security and privacy risk. It also says the data in the wrong hands could be used to conduct mass surveillance or to track individuals. Wait. Wait, what? Wow, what? What? Wait, thanks for the news. Flag. Yeah, thanks for Yeah, thank you so much. We were not aware of that. Wow. More than 26 million people have already submitted their uh -oh. DNA using the home tests to trace their lineage or to spot potential genetic vulnerabilities to disease. Perfect. Well, people, 26 million people are not aware of that, apparently. Yeah, and they've been ex exposed and compromised. Damn it. Some privacy advocates say the data is sold to researchers and drug companies, though the test kit makers have said it's generic data without anything to identify specific people. And the course. Sure, just like they did with the cell phones. <laughs> yeah, it's all it's always just metadata. You can't you can't connect it back to anybody. Don't worry, your privacy is safe with us. Trust us. Home DNA kit makers say they take security very seriously. Ancestry.com says it does not share DNA data with insurance companies or employers. Twenty three and Me says no. And yet, yeah, that's kind of funny that they say they don't. But you know, it could always change. Tomorrow they they could they could. That's and then true. what? They still have your information. They could change their policies. And guess what? You're screwed. Information is shared without consent and says its customers without can, consent. quote, choose to have their samples stored at our lab or have it destroyed. Yeah. I'm sure you sign away some things when you submit your DNA to that. Yeah. A few things on this military. Apparently, the military takes DNA samples of all service members anyways. And someone also pointed out that this might be a way to circumvent illegitimate babies or children or wives oh, or women man. from getting military benefits because they don't want the military Ooh. people going around spreading whatever they spread. Spreading their seed. The seed, impregnating people, <laughs> yeah. and then them saying, hey, I want some military benefits because those are great benefits, and I want access to that. That's pretty hilarious. Could but, be an issue there, too. Yeah. No, <sighs> a lot of issues. Yeah. But, but moral of the story, just don't get your DNA. Yeah, don't give it. <laughs> don't Do give it away. You, you don't want to know. Do you yeah. really want to know? Who wants to know? I don't know. Yeah, we're all going to die of cancer yeah, anyways. It just, yeah, it's Just fine. be healthy. <laughs> yep. Going back in time a little bit, September 10th, 2019, WRAL sports fan universities use Tracker app to make sure student athletes show up for class. The CEO of Spotter EDU says the app is used by 50 campuses. Now UNC is one of them, using it to check if That's student athletes <laughs> are going to class. 
I, that's a big name. UNC? Yeah. I think, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. You tell yeah. me. Is this a big name in colleges? Yeah. Okay. That's why it's shocking. There it is. Ass. Um, I think it's a good way to keep everyone accountable and just really make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Ryan Gerard is on the golf team and had never heard of the app. And I know you said you are not currently using the app. Would you be open to using it if your coach wanted you to? Absolutely. I mean, you go to class to learn anyway. We're here at a great institution for four years. You're just trying to make the most of it. Spotter. Wait, so what else? Oh, dang. Man, this guy is, I know. is he, he a slave? Well, I, I don't understand what his mentality is. Yeah, if my coach wants me to do it and I'm here, I'm on his way. What the hell? <laughs> really? What if your coach wants you yeah, to walk off a cliff? Yeah, yeah, come on, dude. Have some independent thought. Jeez Louise. Our EDU CEO says classrooms have Bluetooth technology that knows when a cell phone is close, then detects if a user is in class or not. So the only thing that we have access information to is the time the student arrives within range of the Bluetooth signal and the time that they disconnect from it. But this isn't a GPS or geofence. We have no, we don't want to know, nor can we know where the students at if they're not there. Still, some have concerns about privacy. Well, yeah, <laughs> debatable. Yeah, and they left out a lot of things, like they're tracking where else the student is, so they have them all over campus. Yeah. He's acting like, oh, we can't track. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, you do. I don't know. I'd feel kind of weird, like, knowing I was getting yeah. tracked. I don't know if it'd be, I'd be as willing to sign up for something like that. Do you have any private? He's a law student, so he's yeah. a smart one concerns about it? Um, not really. I mean, I feel like people's cell phones get tracked anyway. A UNC spoke. That's what's so bothersome is everyone acts like they're so aware of the tracking, but do they understand? Or why aren't they aware of the repercussions of the tracking and what's being used and what the data? Why don't they, they just don't care? Yeah, they. Well, I feel like it's marketed to just make you think, oh yeah, they're selling you ads or it's for your own good, but. People aren't thinking of the greater implications of what all this data is. Yeah, and it doesn't go away. Yeah. Those, those dick pics don't go away. Yeah. They're never deleted. They're always oh, there. Your location history yeah. will never go away, apparently. Yeah. Spokeswoman declined my request for an interview, but pointed out that UNC already had other methods to track student athlete attendance. For example, teams could hire people to actually come here to the what? classroom <laughs> buildings. And oh, you like <laughs> You like that, don't you? That is crazy. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, let's hear that one again. If, yeah, that's funny. To track student athlete attendance, for example, teams could hire people to actually come here to the classroom buildings and look inside and make sure those student athletes Why? are there. So the spokeswoman says this is just a more efficient way of doing things. Now, the CEO of the app told me that there are some other schools in North Carolina who use this app. He would not tell me which ones. It's just really weird. Why do you need to track these athletes? What do you kind of athletes do you have at your school? Maybe you should get a better caliber of athlete. I don't know. Yeah. If they're lying about going to school, you need to hire people to, or you don't, doesn't matter because it's college and who cares? See, that, that's the approach I like to take. But yeah. you bring up a, an interesting point because the reason why they're tracking them is because of that college eligibility to play. Yeah. So they need to keep up their grades so they yeah. can play and of course they believe this is best achieved by monitoring their attendance but yeah the washington <laughs> post picked up on this recently yeah the washington uh, uh post article was much more sinister than that video yeah well the, so. the video was <laughs> came out september so the washington post just picked this up december 10th i think yeah and it has a lot more worrisome implications such as they're going to be tracking students behaviors or they can already track their behavior for example, do they only leave their dorm to go out to eat? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. They can tell how much time they're spending in the library or other parts of campus. And then you really start to question, well, what happens when you bring up scholarships into play with this? Yeah. What if you're on a scholarship and they see, you know, you're not at the library enough? Yeah. That sort of thing. And then everything could be compromised. So it's really sinister. <laughs> yeah, it can be. I... I I find it extremely disturbing. It's, oh, yeah. And, and I say this as a college professional. Yeah, you should, we don't need to track <laughs> students at this level. This isn't. That's why I enjoy teaching college, because they're independent. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not if they're being tracked like this. Yeah. Well, it goes back to the kind of helicopter parenting. Yeah. And it continues to college, which the surveillance brings up, too, because parents want to know. Is my kid going to college that I'm paying yeah. for? And they have these apps tracking their kids on yeah. their phones. And uh, 
What, what, uh, what point does it, what point do we stop? Yeah. And what, it, what message is that sending to our, our youth? Oh, we can't yeah. trust you. Can't you trust have to you. be tracked. All the time, everywhere. So it just passes on from parents tracking me to college, to government, to everything yeah. else. Uh, and no freedom. Precisely. Where's the freedom? Yep, exactly. You got to give students room to grow, too. That's the point. Moving on. Yeah. The nation, California fires prove the America dream is flammable. Written by a UCLA professor. What is this? I was honestly surprised that this got as much attention it did. as it did. <laughs> because the article is basically implying that we need to give up private home ownership, home ownership yeah. for climate change. The, the funny thing is the way the article kind of presents how it reaches this conclusion is very non sequitur in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They start with the fires that affected a lot of the more affluent areas in it's California. South, Southern California, I think, and then, specifically. Yeah. And then it mentioned how their workers maybe were very affected, and of course their workers are lower class. Yeah, like their maids and service yeah. staff for these big mansions and crap. And then somehow that switched to, well, since you know we had to build in this area where we shouldn't have built in, uh, we need communes. What? <laughs> yeah. For global warming, for climate change, fight climate change. <laughs> because it's a better way to manage the land. Yeah. But... That's obviously not proven at all, because have you seen any apartment complexes with nice gardens and communes and no. vegetables growing in them? No, no, uh, no. All we see is high-density housing yep, solutions. high-density concrete housing. And it not also... in touch with nature or anything. It goes not back sustainable. to... sustainable. Yeah. The, the kind of shut-up slave, get in your box. Yeah. Here's where you're going to live. You, you're too stupid to know how to use your own land. Yeah, that's disturbing. Yeah. Because land ownership is so important. It's part of the American dream. Right. It's what makes that's what everyone's always at what used to be after is land ownership. I want to own some land, get my yeah. house. The white picket fence. But now the times are changing. People don't want that. They don't want the land. They don't want the yard. Oh no, yeah. no. I'm gonna pay for an expensive apartment. Just live in a box. And buy a car or something. Very strange. Kanye West had some thoughts on land ownership and some other things on a show he was on back in October. 25th so what is what does he say well let's check check it out kanye west big boy tv on land ownership what do, you say, <laughs> what do you say to people <laughs> that say you turn you turned your back on the culture or exactly 100 percent. i have turned my back on the idea of victimization meant of course he's talking about people criticizing him because he met with donald trump and did a lot of stuff so people were saying he turned his back on the culture yada 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 and this whole Jesus is King thing was kind of controversial back when it was released because the whole Christian thing, people don't like, you know, whatever. It's all, and they all push back. And he said, and this guy's asking him, hey, Kanye, how do you feel about people pushing back? Well, yeah, it's yeah. what it is. I push back. Yeah. Reality. We are locked up. We went from one and four. We went from one and four to one and three. But we always pointing at the white people. But yet, we want to spend all of our money on foreigns. We want to spend all our money on luxury as opposed to going and buying some land. America is for sale. And there's a lot of barren land. Disney bought a lot of it in Florida. But the culture has you focused so much on fucking somebody, bitch, and pulling up in a foreign and rapping about things that could get you locked up and then saying you about prison reform. Mm. Like, it's... Bro, we brainwashed out here, bro. Come on, man. This is a free man talking. Democrats had us voting Democrats for food stamps for years, bro. What are you talking about? Guns in the 80s, taking the fathers out the home. Damn. Yeah. So there's Kanye saying, landowner, you need to buy land. Disney bought a bunch of land. They keep buying. That's the power. That's where people. Yeah. It makes no sense to want to rent something from somebody else who owns it. That doesn't make, you just make it somebody else more rich every time. It just oh, it's, defies any bit of logic. Yeah. And going back to that article, that's why I find that article so disturbing because mm -hmm. it keeps promoting this idea of paying money to yeah. somebody else instead of investing it mm -hmm. in yourself, like in, Kanye yeah. was saying. Yeah. So if someone's saying, give your money to somebody else, or Kanye is saying, invest money in yourself yeah. and in Jesus, because that's what his 
he's in Jesus. He's on very religious, very religious journey right now. So it's cool. Moving on. I got a lot of clips yeah, of Kanye. Clip. Yeah, <laughs> nothing to do with land ownership. Now it's Kanye on racism and politics. And I told him, I said, look, my, my father's a Black Panther. My mother got arrested for the sit-ins at age six. They were fighting for us to have the right to our opinion, not the right to vote for whoever the white liberals said black <laughs> people are supposed to Damn. Vote. That's pretty funny. ...to vote for. You get what I'm saying? And then James Corden went in and said, well, this president, you're Christian, and this president, I don't see anything Christian about him. I said, okay, so last year, y'all tried to tell me who I was supposed to vote for because I'm black. Now, this year, white liberals trying to tell me who I'm supposed to vote for because I'm Christian. That would be like, I live in Calabasas, so everyone in my car has got to be a convertible, huh? <laughs> it's just all based on y'all vision of what I'm supposed to do. And I understand, like, a lot of people, it's not a matter of whether you like it or who like it. We are in a country where we're allowed to like whatever we like. I love... Yeah, can we hear that last part again? Oh, <laughs> well, yes. To who like it? We are in a country where we allowed to like whatever we like. I love. There yes. you go, and that's what's important. People always forget that, especially with yeah. freedom of speech. Too, they forget that. Yeah, people can say shitty things, but you can say shitty things yeah. right back. And there's more good people just doing good things and shitty. That's usually the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. Just respect one another. That's mm -hmm. all. That's the main message. Yep. Instead of putting people in labels and boxes and thinking you know them, yep. just get to know people. And with politics, people. like he's talking about what oh, the Democrats yeah. have been doing is freaking crazy. Yeah. And they're getting a lot of pushback now. So Yeah, they're getting way too hateful. <laughs> yeah. Kanye West, I'm following, with the following rules on what woke is. I've been canceled before there was cancel culture. <laughs> Who told you that my career would be over. The same people that are telling you that you can't have a right to say who you will vote for, those people will be soon to take Jesus out of school. Those people will be soon to remove Jesus, period, from America, which is the Bible Belt. Those people will be soon, man, come on, man, I ain't finna go Alex Jones level on y'all, man, come on, man, what y'all want? Like, wake up, wake <laughs> up, Mr. West, wake up, culture. Wake up. Everybody think they so woke, but they following the rules of what woke's supposed to be. Hip-hop ain't <laughs> never been about following rules. It's been about doing what you feel. I'm going to take the Louis. I'm going to throw it like this. I'm going to do it with the polo. I'm going to do it like this. Even like the way I talk. Hold on. Let me use my African-American voice. Let me use my Disney-approved voice. Now that, you know what I'm saying? We're not yeah. even speaking. In our Especially the Disney part. Yeah. He's Disney got a hard on for Disney. <laughs> yeah. You could tell he doesn't like Disney for some reason. <laughs> It's also true. You, everyone's yeah. just so judgy about, yeah, everything. about everything. Yes, it's all judge, judge. Yeah. Our own language, bro. Like, we talk louder than this. Africans talk loud. Italian moms talk loud. We talk louder, but we speak in our corporate voice. Or we don't want to ruin the deal voice. Or this why. I, I love his white people voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why I find it so He's funny. He's a genius. Yeah. He really is. He's. I have another clip, Kanye, I don't know, I just put Kanye West, I don't know what he actually is saying, so we're going to learn together. World Countries around the world, the amount of energy and engineers that went into turning the iPhone camera from t one camera to two, and guess what we got here? We got three cameras on you that take super long to take a photo if anybody got the new iPhone. <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the amount of information and thought that went into that can fix the Bahamas can fix Haiti. So many people at MIT, let me tell you MIT right now, y'all in a box. They have you in a box. You can save the world, but you are working on things that are too small. Take a step back. Stop worrying about, stop worrying about your college, uh, your loans. Stop worrying about what job that they got waiting for you in Silicon Valley. MIT, you can save the world. Kids in college, you can save the world. I'll put my life on this interview right now. It's up to y'all. Y'all have the ability to just step back, step back from what you think culture is today. It's not, it's not about any candidate. It's not about red or blue. It's about humanity. Y'all talking about it's 12 years of oxygen left. Talking about we're going to kill the earth. We can't kill the earth. 
We're going to kill the things that keep us alive on the earth, and the earth going to survive. <laughs> it's up to y'all. Y'all the future. Yeah. Y'all the future, but what y'all working on right now? Working on, I'm working on this 3D printed thing that is funded by, funded by who though? Y'all could do it. Yeah, yeah, who are you making rich? By paying the rent, by paying, who, who, what are yeah. you doing it for? Are you doing it for humanity? Is the iPhone, the latest iPhone, is that for the greater good of humanity? Is that what that really is? No, it's not. It's bullshit. It's commercialism. I, I agree. Making Tim Collins, whatever his name is, more rich. Every day, whatever. What's his name? Tim Cook. Tim Cook. Tim Cook. <laughs> I see so many students out there that they think they need to work for these people too. Oh, I can't make anything. I got to go work for Elon Musk. No, you do make your yourself. Own yeah. Even podcasters. Yeah. You're like, I need to podcast manager. I need to do yeah. this. No, do your own God. Do your own damn podcast. Yeah. Jeez you, Louise. You do, do you. you. Make your own stuff. Start your own business. That's what it's about. Yeah, help your community, get mm-hmm. involved with your community. That's what Kanye's saying. Yep, exactly. And we got to stop depending on these companies to make a job for us. And people in control, setting yeah. standards, setting culture, telling us what's right and wrong. Yeah, no, telling no. you what to buy. <laughs> no, we don't need that. Last clip from Kanye West on Angry Birds. And that's what happened. That's what, that's what we be thinking about on Instagram. There's a person... They can insert comments at will. They can insert comments that they, they want to get you. Let me tell you something. There's something that Zane denounced that I know for a fact. The game Angry Birds has a motion like this. And if you remember, girls are just not known for playing a lot of video games. This game was popular with girls. It was a scientific calculation that this mm. set off a certain dopamine specifically in the female mind. What else go like this? Tinder. What else? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. So the funny thing is mm. the people that control that, rappers be talking about, I got your bitch. Instagram got your bitch. Mm-hmm. Instagram got your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I know my Christian scorecard just went down for using a profane, a profane piece of language. Uh, <laughs> you ain't got your Instagram got all y'all. Because they're going to do it for the gram before they do it to you. They're going to send mm-hmm. a picture to the gram before they send it to you. <laughs> Social media doing more to hurt families than it is to help families. And families are the key to health. Bam. I just want to play that one more time. Just that little bit there about social media and family and health. Social media doing more to hurt families than it is to help families. And families are the key to health. There it is. Yeah. Social media was originally, everyone was sold on the idea, it's going to bring us all together. No, it actually has divided us, and we're actually not closer together. Everyone's really alone now. It's really yeah. sad. Everybody, everybody's on their phones. Yeah. People don't want to talk anymore. It's I know. bizarre. Got to just pick up the phone and dial. Mm, dial the numbers. Yeah. I will say, this also reminds me of what we were talking about with the data. People mm-hmm. always think, oh, I have nothing to hide. But obviously people were collecting data on all these things that you weren't aware of of the swiping motion and they were able to learn that women were more addicted to it and of course now they can engineer you to do so now everything swipes yeah Yeah, you swipe instagram facebook all those things are swipe it's all just everyone just loves the swipe thing it's a swipe swipe we all love the swipe we feel like we're getting something yeah. There's a dopamine release there. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Very strange. Very strange. And you thought you had nothing to hide, though. Yeah. With, with your data, with your swipes, well, with your emotions. Psh, yeah. I, I'm, it all adds up. They're learning who knows what, and we don't And they're know. using it against us. Yes. To manipulate. Yes. To manipulate us. Last clip. Well, it's actually switching gears. January 9th, 2019, the beginning of this year, Democracy Now! had longtime reporter William Arkin on, civilian... And William Arkin, at the beginning of the year, I guess, had he left NBC News saying the media is a Trump circus that encourages perpetual war. He wrote a long, scathing, like, open letter or something just saying the media is a joke. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty good. So here's William Arkin on Democracy Now! on civilian experts disappearing in media being replaced by spooks. 
you talked about the people who populate the networks as pundits, um, um, and you've been a fierce critic of the national security state, or at least understanding who it is who is explaining things to us. Reading from Politico, former CIA director John Brennan laid a super spook, they said, to be reborn as a TV <laughs> newsie. He just cashed in at NBC News as a senior national security and intelligence analyst, served as first expert views on Meet the Press. The Brennan acquisition seeks to elevate NBC to spook parody with CNN, which employs former director of national intelligence James Clapper, former CIA director Michael Hayden, a similar capacity. Other lesser-known national security veterans thrive under TV's grow lights, almost too numerous to list. They include Chuck Rosenberg, former acting DEA administrator, chief of staff for FBI director James Comey, and counselor to former FBI director Robert Mueller, Frank Figliuzzi, uh, former chief of FBI counterintelligence, uh, Juan Zarate, de deputy national security advisor under Bush at NBC, Fran Townsend, homeland security advisor under Bush, and it goes on and on and on. These are now the pundits. And so when you have pundits in mainstream media. Yeah. All spooks. <laughs> have a situation like President Trump announcing he will immediately withdraw U.S. troops from Syria and have the troops that are in Afghanistan. You have this massive attack on him that's actually led by um, the permanent national security state um, under the guise of pundits wait, on television. Is, is Amy Goodman defending Trump? Well, this was the beginning of this year. This was back in January of 2019, so this is the beginning of this year. Because it almost sounds like she... Well, she, yeah. No, she brings up a extremely yeah. she's she is trying point. to she but even yeah she pushes back in this whole interview she pushes back a little bit because this guy pushes on her say you you report on Trump. i didn't yeah. I cut that all out because it's just hilarious but not yeah, really that was... <laughs> healthy talk show <laughs> but yeah she's no trump fan no for the record. she is absolutely <laughs> not she is super opposite in case, trump. In she case hates you trump. never listen to democracy yeah, now it's true good context <laughs> yeah she's not this is not fox news well i think that you've uh i mean what you said stands for itself amy but i would add to it that I think the real crisis is that when we have a panel discussion on television in the mainstream press and even in the mainstream newspapers, uh, we don't populate that panel with people who are in opposition. We don't? We have... We don't? Huh? No opposition? What? Mm, I've have, kind yeah, of noticed that's, that. Mm, that's weird. Mm, everyone hates Trump. That is kind of weird, huh? A single war party in the United States, and it's the only one that is given voice. And so really the crisis is not so much that there are uh, experienced government officials speaking out. The problem is that there aren't critics who are sitting next to them saying that you're full of it. <laughs> and so to me, yeah. we need to balance that. And I think that probably because of the phenomenon of Donald Trump, let's just be honest about it, uh, really what we see on TV now is uh, former Obama administration officials masquerading as analysts who are nonpartisan when in fact they are partisan and in and indeed we see fewer retired generals and fewer retired admirals who sometimes are useful in terms of explaining the profession of arms and the conduct of military operations in favor of these political uh, figures who have a partisan view. Uh, I just don't think the American public gets well served by the fact that there isn't a broad range of opinions on those panels. I want to see peaceniks. I want to see academics. I want to see historians. Yeah, good luck, dude. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? This guy wants a reasonable yeah. Dream news on. Guess? Dream on. <laughs> but you want different viewpoints on subject what? matter? What? Wait, what? 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 Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want programming? I want them to as much have a voice in terms of understanding what's going on as I do see a former Obama administration official. We have to break. <laughs> we have, have to, to break. break. Whoa, the spooks uh, got her. I know. What the hell? <laughs> Democracy now. You're funded yeah. by the users. You don't really have to break. You don't have commercial. <laughs> well, you have a one hour show, I guess. So you, have to, you have to meet the commercial timeline. But Jesus. Yeah. Right there, when he hit, dropped that. He dropped that. He dropped oh, Obama. No. Bam. We oh, have to break. We got uh, Okay. A little upsetting. Yeah. But <sighs> you have all these intelligence people controlling the media, controlling yeah. the message. It's not just one big conspiracy theory. It's a 
kind of weird how the intelligence yeah. agencies work, how this all works together, how everything's easier with the internet. The internet's a dream come true for anyone who want to do surveillance. Think about the people trying to do surveillance back in the 70s and that's had to do wiretaps. Oh, that's hard to do a wiretap. <laughs> a physical wiretap on a telephone line is a little difficult to do. A lot easier to sit back and just bloop, suck everything down for the yeah. neighborhood. Suck or it all with, in. With those stingrays. Oh, look like at that naked, look at that naked picture. Yeah. Suck it all in. The internet's the greatest thing for surveillance. <laughs> that's why you got to use Signal. And that's why you need to stay educated on the internet yeah, and stay away from this corporate media and support independent media. Yeah. Here, we don't have any CIA agents working over here. We just need your love and support over at Healthy Talk Show. So head on over to healthytalkshow.com slash support. Your support means that you get unbiased independent media from non-spooks. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's usually the, that's a general idea. <laughs> HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and now Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash live. Feedback, our email, AskHealthyTalkShow.com and HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash social for our social media links. Love and light. Love and light.